All right, friends, now we're gonna talk about the second type on how to connect new sources to Power BI. We have the direct query. So of course, the question is, what is direct query? If you use it, Power BI will not store an extra copy of the data inside it. Instead, the data gonna stay in the source system and each time the visuals in Power BI needs data, it has to send query to the source system. So now let's understand what this means behind the scenes. So by looking again to our high level architecture, and now let's say that your data lives inside databases. So you could have like SQL Server, Postgres SQL, MySQL, or modern platforms like Databricks or Snowflake. So your data lives inside databases and inside something called tables. Now, if you want to analyze this data inside Power BI, you have to connect it to it. Power BI is gonna give you here two options. The first one is similar to the one that we did in the files, you can use import. So the same thing gonna happen, the data gonna be loaded from the database tables and it's gonna go inside Power BI. But Power BI gives you a second option called direct query. If you use it, Power BI is gonna keep a permanent connection to the database and it does not load a copy of the data inside Power BI. That means there is nothing stored inside the data layer. There is no local extra copy inside it. The data is gonna stay where it is outside Power BI. So with that, we are left only with two layers, the model, because we still need the structure and the data modeling, and as well the visual layer. And now, of course, the big question is obvious. How does Power BI gonna now get the data for the visuals? If you are creating new visual or interacting with it, the visual gonna send a request to the model, and now the model needs data to answer the request, but there is no data available inside Power BI. That's why it's gonna go and generate an SQL query and go back completely outside of Power BI to the original database. So now the database is gonna get the query, it's gonna go and execute it, and then the result is gonna be sent back to Power BI. So the model is gonna get data, and after a few calculations, it's gonna send it back to the visual. As you can see, not everything happens inside Power BI. There is now dependency to a new system, your database. You have for this scenario two systems that work together in order to show something in the visuals. And every interaction you make might trigger a new query like if you are filtering clicking or changing something in the slicer all those stuff gonna keep generating requests back to the database so with that the power bi and the database gonna keep talking to each others the whole time so this is exactly how the direct query works now let's go back to power bi in order to practice all right now in order to try the direct query you have to have some kind of database installed locally at your pc or if you are working in company maybe you can test out the database that you have but the thing is don't worry about it because all the course is based actually on files so we will not have to deal with databases all time but if you don't have one i'm gonna show you now quickly what to install and if you don't do it then just check what i'm doing so the easiest database to use is the microsoft sql server express of course it is free you're gonna install this server locally at your pc it's just like few clicks after that you're gonna go and download the client so you have to download the sql server management studio ss SMS. Now, once you install both of them and you start the SSMS, you're going to get this window over here. So you're going to specify the connection information like the server name going to be the local host SQL Express. The authentication going to be the Windows authentication. This is going to be the easiest one. And make sure to click on Trust Server Certificates. After that, we click on Connect. At the start, you're going to have an empty database. And that's why I have prepared for you something. If you go to the course materials, you're going to find here SQL Server Database. If you open it, now here you're going to get like like a full script in order to create database and as well insert data inside it. So don't worry about everything inside it, just copy the whole thing and then go back to the client over here, then go to new query and paste the whole thing. And after that, we're gonna go and execute. So if it works, then congrats, you have created a database. Now in order to browse it, we're gonna go to the left side, databases, and you're gonna find this nice icon, sales DB. Now inside it, you're gonna find tables and here you're gonna find five tables. So you can have have customers employees and inside them there is as well data so if you right click on one of them and say select top 1000 rows you're gonna find here like for example five customers so now my data is living inside a database inside the server that runs locally at my pc and now you might say you know what i would like to analyze the data inside my database but using a nice tool like power bi so in order to do that we have to connect now power bi with the database so let's do that now back to the same report that we use 
use in order to connect the Excel, we're going to go and add for it a new source. And this is really nice in Power BI. You can add different sources in the same file. So what we're going to do, the same thing. We're going to go to get data and then to more. And here we have databases. So let's click on it. And the first one going to be the SQL Server database. So let's go and connect. Now we're going to get a very important window where first we have to give the connection information. So the server is going to be the same thing. Localhost SQL Express. For the database, we can leave it empty. And now comes the most important thing, data connectivity mode. And here Power BI offer us two options, the import and the direct query. As you can see, those two options are available as we connected a database. With the files, we had only one option, the import. And here you have to make very important decision because if you leave it as import and later you change your mind and say, yeah, I would like it to have it as direct query. Well, you cannot do that. Once you say this is an import, it's going to stay as an import. There is no way back. But if you use the direct query, it's going to be nice because you can switch it later to an import. So be careful what you are choosing here. Now, since we already tried out the import, we're going to switch it to a direct query. Let's go and hit OK. Now we're going to get another important window type of the authentication. If you are working in projects, you have to switch it to a database because usually we have a username and password that is created from the database admins but now since we have everything locally at our pc we're gonna stick with the option windows so we're gonna leave it like this use my current credentials and let's go and say connect and then another okay now if you get this window that means power bi is now connected to your database and it was able to extract, let's say, the structure, the metadata of this database. So now, as you can see on the left side, we have the server name, we have the database name, the sales DB. If you extend it, you're going to see as well all the tables. So the connection was successful. Now, the same thing, you can browse your data to make sure that everything is fine. And then you can decide which table should be loaded. So for example, I'm going to say, I would like to have the customer and the orders. So I don't want to load the whole thing. And same thing, we have here two options, transform data or load. Here the name is a little bit confusing. You are not loading the data itself because we are using a direct query. It is just loading the structure of the tables, the names of the tables, the types, the columns, but not the content, not the data itself. So if you click load and here another OK, it's going to be pretty fast, even if your tables are really big because we are just loading few metadata informations. So now again, we're going to go through the views one by one. Let's start with the model view. Now you can see we have two new tables, the customers and the orders. And look at this, we have a new icon. So it's like a white box and we have two directional arrows. This indicates that this table is using Dart Query. And as we mouse hover on it, it stays storage mode Dart Query. So now you can easily identify in the model view that those two tables are using Dart Query and the other two from the Excel are using the imports. And if you don't believe it, you can click on it and go to the properties and you can see over here on the advanced, the storage mode is now direct query and it is active because you can change it. As I said, if you are using direct query, you can switch it to an import. And of course, you can see the dual over here. You can ignore it for now. So now what I'm going to say, let's go to the sales over here. Let's say the table is very big and it is very slow at the visuals and stuff. I would like to switch it from direct query to an import. So you click on it and then you go to the advanced settings and then switch it simply to an import. Now, once I click on it, Power BI is going to give you like warning. Once you go import, you cannot go back. So we're going to say it's fine. And now Power BI will load the data. It, again, it went fast because it's very small table but it's gonna do exactly like the import it's gonna go to the database and load all the data inside power bi and with that it has its own local copy inside this file and as you can see the icon did switch so now we don't have any more the arrows it is the storage that means it is an import and with that we have only one table as a direct query so this is how you deal with the model view now let's go to the table view so the first two from the excel it is import and now if you click to the customers you will find we have an issue you can see power bi telling us this table cannot be shown because it is not in import mode so with the direct query we have some limitations compared to the imports power bi does not have any data for you in the table view and it will not go and grab all the data from the database to show you this view so that's why it is not possible to show you anything here and not only that we have another limitations with the direct query is that you don't have all the data transformations functions and calculations in the dark 
works. A lot of things are disabled because Power BI cannot manipulate the data. And of course, Power BI will never go back to the source system and manipulate the data there. So you're going to be very limited if you are using the direct query. And actually, we cannot do anything in this view. So that's why we're going to go now to the report view. And I'm going to say, let's go and create a new page. So now we're going to work with the direct query table, which is the sales customers. Let's go and create a similar thing where we have a bar chart. We're going to take the countries and the customer ID and then enable the data labels. As you can see, we have three customers from USA and two customers from Germany. So those data comes live from the database. And now I am able to do analysis. So far, this is easy and cute. But now let's have the real things. Now let's go and change the data inside our database and see how Power BI direct query going to react to it. Now, if you go to the database and we do something like this, we say update sales customers. And then we're gonna set the country equal to USA. And we have to select one of the customers, like for example, the first customer. So customer ID equal to one. So now if I execute it, with that, I update it to one row. And if we check the data again, with that, we have four customers from USA and one from Germany. So now we have done change in our data and let's see whether Power BI is gonna react to it. Now, you can see that we still have three customers from USA and two from Germany. That means this visual didn't get updated. Now, now let's try something else to create a new visual. So let's go and create this time a table because I just want to check the raw data. Let's go and get all the columns. So first name, last name, score. I just click on everything. And now if you look to our visual, the new one that we just created, it is holding the correct information. So it is the fresh data. We have four from USA and one from Germany. So that means we are working with fresh data without like refreshing the data over here, right? But the thing is now it is very weird. The old visual holds old data the new visual is holding a new data so what is going on here well the thing is we have something called cache inside power bi so power bi gonna store like small amount of data for each visual just to reduce the traffic that is going to the source system because if you are building a huge dashboard that is completely based on the direct query it gonna generate hundreds of queries to the database and imagine you have a lot of users then you're gonna generate massive traffic to the database Bases. This is gonna destroy the connectivity to the database. So that's why Power BI here puts behind each visual a cache. So now you might say, but this is the same thing like the imports. It is data inside Power BI and I'm not getting the fresh data. So now what is really the difference between the cache and the import that we had? Now the thing is, this cache is only for one visual and anything else that you are creating will not use this cache. All the new visuals as we saw, it's gonna go and grab new fresh data. But in the other side, the data of the imports, which is stored inside the memory, it will be used in all visuals that you are creating. So it can be the same copy. So this is one difference. Another difference is that the data inside the cache is temporary and it's going to live as long as you have the session open. So that means if you close Power BI, the session is going to end and Power BI is going to go and wipe out the whole cache. And once you open the file again, the cache is going to be empty. That means for all the visuals that you have inside your dashboard, Power BI has to go to the source system and query the data and the database is going to answer back with the data and for it Power BI is going to create fresh new cache and with that it's like the refresh you are getting new fresh cache with the new data but things in the import is totally different once you save your work and close Power BI desktop the data will not be removed so Power BI is going to save as well the data itself of course not in the memory inside the file and once you open Power BI again the difference here it will will not go to the database. Instead, it's going to go and grab all the data inside the file and put it in the memory in order to have some speed. So as you can see, it is not based on your session. It is all the data is permanent and it is always based on the local copy. Cache is temporary and the import is permanent. But of course, if you ask my opinion, the direct query doesn't sound consistent. It is going to be hard to understand whether the data is fresh or from the cache. And as you see in the report, we had like two versions of the same data. That's why the data in the import it is more consistent and there is no confusion about the data because everything comes from the same source but of course we can manage the cache and we can configure all those stuff in the power bi service now you can check the cache options if you go to the file over here and then to the options and settings then we go to options and here in the data load the first one in the global if you scroll down you're gonna see all the options about the cache you can see we are using around 50 kilobytes this is for the part chart that we just use you can go and clear the cache and as 
as well control the size of it oh so we can try something if you save the work so let's go and save it connection types and then save and then what we're gonna do we're gonna close power bi in order to end the session and then start it again now if we reopen it again power bi has to go now to the database and grab fresh new data to our visuals look at this now we have four customers in usa and one in germany this is exactly the behavior of the direct query each time you start a new session it's gonna go and grab fresh new data if you build new visuals as well it's gonna go and grab new data but in order to improve the performance and as well reduce the number of traffics it's gonna go and create a cache behind each visual and this is the big difference to the imports here if i change something in the excel and i close and open power bi 100 times it's gonna go and always show the same informations because it is working with the local copy and not directly from the source so this is how direct query works if you like this type of content where i'm sketching stuff and i'm showing you all things behind the scenes then support my work by subscribing liking and commenting and sharing it with other people like you and you can check my website for the other courses like the SQL and Tableau. You can follow my written content in my newsletter and LinkedIn. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.